side pacing. And, um, and I came forth. I was a surprise. And then my dad was called in. And when he heard that mum had twins, he fainted. <laughs> he went straight down. It was a big shock. And he had a big tummy because he liked. And uh, my mum said he bounced. Uh, and she said two nurses sort of pulled him up. And when he heard that mum still had twins, he turned around and he walked out of the hospital. And I met him 20 years later, Christmas Eve. And my mind went back to this, even as I saw the Father's Day. And um, when I was 14, I got a job. And I, I come from London, from Wembley, where the soccer stadium is. When I was 14, I got a job in a little mom and pop grocery store, like a small Tesco store, on a Friday night and all day Saturday to help my mum. I had my twin sister. We were four, four kids, plus uh, me, including me. And um, so I got this job. And I had that job from when I was 14 to 21 because of the lady, the manageress, who used to love on me and share with me about Jesus. And then one evening when I was 18 years of age, she said, Richard, I want to take you to a meeting. I said, what kind of meeting is that? She said, well, it's in a church. I said, oh. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. I said, oh, a church can be so boring. I said, but I'm going to come because you invited me, May, and I'm going to sit right by that book door. And if it, right by the door, if it's, when it gets boring, I'm going to slip out. I always look at who's by the back door. I don't, <laughs> my eyes on you. And you as well at the... And uh, I came in, it shocked me the place was packed. Then it totally shocked me, I couldn't believe they were all singing their heads off like you this morning. And they were so full of joy, I, I was just, I, I'd never heard anything like, I said, what are they so happy about? It just shocked me. And I sat by the back. And then this man got up to speak and I quickly realized he was blind. His name was Peter. But he had such joy. And as he shared, I quickly realized he could see better than I could. Not these eyes. These eyes. And growing up, I was full of questions about life. I, I, is there a God? And I didn't want to get married because I'd seen my mum beat, you know, heard she got bashed in the, I saw that she had a dent in her cheek and all kinds of things. And uh, we were poor. All our clothes were second-hand clothes growing up. Um, and I, I'm not going to get married. And I, I was kind of critical and just negative and in a, struggling. Didn't do well at school. And um, just struggling. And I had a few pieces of the puzzle about God and Jesus, but nobody had ever shown me the picture on the puzzle box. And life was like a puzzle with pieces, but no picture on the box. And I was just totally confused. Didn't know where I was going that night. <laughs> This blind man, Peter, he showed me the picture on the puzzle box. Saw it for the first time. And it was like the penny dropped. My eyes were opened. I remember my heart started beating. My legs started shaking. And I found myself, when he gave the call, I found myself walking forward. And I sensed God was reaching out his hand to me. Hands that had been stretched out on a cross for me were now reaching out to me and saying, come take my hand. And I took God's hand. And I don't know everything that happened that night, but I do know this. I know that I'd walked into that meeting with me and May, the manageress, and I walked out of that meeting with me, May, and God. And I had this sense, I, I'll never forget it, and this sense has stayed with me the 40 plus years I've been in my mission, 100 nations, and all kinds of things have happened. But I've tried to turn over rocks, turn letters, sat malaria and India, 
had demonic attacks, had gun put to my head, put in prison in Turkey, 70 foot waves come over our ships, tornadoes, you name it. Days where we had no food. But this sense has never left me. This sense. But when I started to walk out of that meeting, it was like I'd taken God's hand, I had this sense from God, God and I had a shot on his father's day, where God said, you know, Richard, you had an earthly dad, <laughs> he took off, he quit on you. But when you take my hand, I'll never let it go. Whatever happens in life, whatever happens in, I'll never forget it, whatever happens in life, I'm never going to let it go. I'm never going to let it go. I'll never walk out on you. I'll never leave you. And that stayed with me. I'm 65. When I was 18, 65 now. It's never left me. And it's interesting. It's only a few, you know, God gave me this little approach. And it's the theme of friendship with God. And I realized, actually, God gave it, but behind it was some of my own story. Of God whose hands were stretched out for me this way, and then reaching out for me. And it's about a theme of God's, what's your wish from God? And then that's the first question. If you could wish one thing from God for you today, what would that be? Pray for their one wish. And they say, did you know that God has one wish for you? May I show you with these four pictures? And as you tell the story, the wish is, God wants to begin a friendship with you. <laughs> and this week I've reached out my hand and said, God is reaching out his hand to you. Isn't it interesting? And it's come out of, in a sense, you know, some of my story. And, um, but, uh, I just share, is that okay to share that with on this Father's Day? We've got a great father. Yes. Yes. And just to say with my two sons, as I said, growing up, they were angels when they were asleep, expensive <laughs> when they were awake. I know that's not true of your kids, just mine. <laughs> I remember one time saying to them, I don't know if I've been a great dad, I never had a model. It's a total vacuum. I could write on a postage stamp what I knew about my father. So I don't know if I've been a good dad, but I've loved your mum. I have loved your mum. I met her on the Lagos in Singapore, chased her for two years on the ship. That was extracurricular activity. <laughs> now I chase her around the kitchen table. I can't wait to see her tomorrow. I'm chasing her. Is that okay to say in church, is that? I'm crazy in love with her. I don't even like talking about her when I'm away. In fact, that they invited me, there's talk of me coming back, and it won't be with, it'll have to be with Rachel. When I come now, half my face glad, half sad. Because Rachel's not here. You want total glad? Rachel with me. Wow. Where's my box? Do you like my box? Yes. yes. Keith, do you like my box? We met earlier, fellow Englishman. <laughs> Brother, you like my box? It's been many years since we met. You like my box? Thank you, Thank you very much. Do you like my box? You like my box? Thank you. Yes. Hey, we live in a box. House, drive a box. We have a car. I thought he wanted my box. <laughs> Live in a box, drive a box, watch a box, TV. Kids play Xbox. We shop in a box. Amazon Prime. Or well, what's the Chinese version? Tao Bao. Tao what? Bao. Bao. We eat out of a box. Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> we worship in a box. Nice box. 
One day they'll put us in a box. You're not laughing, huh? <laughs> now talk to me. Why do I like my box? Talk to me. Why do I like my box? It's comfortable. It's comfortable. This is my box. You get your own box. Why do I like my box? Do you know it's a box? I know it's a box. <laughs> Good. Why do I like my box? I can control the environment. This is my box. I've got my walls. I'm in my safety zone, my comfort zone. And uh, hard to get out of the box. <laughs> and welcome to the American dream. It's also the Hong Kong dream, British dream. Welcome to the American dream. Get a box, fill it with the latest and greatest. When it gets filled up, get a bigger box. Raise two kids to get their box, or three or five, or however many we got up here today. And here's the thinking of the dream. If I get a box, fill it with the latest and greatest, raise two kids to get their box. But if I have my box, my kids, and I put security and cameras and alarms and whatever, and wrap myself in insurance, and I can be in my box, then I can live a risk-free life. And if I can live a risk-free life, I can live a worry-free life. And if I can live a worry-free life, then I'm going to be happy. happy. And the American dream, life, liberty, and the pursuit happy. of happiness. Funny thing, pursuing happiness. It's like grabbing oil. You think you got it, or grabbing sand. It's elusive, isn't it? And you think you're going to be happy in this, but what you gain, you have to maintain. It becomes a pain, a drain. Raise two kids to do the same. Shall I say that again? <laughs> And I've been around the world to 100 nations over these 40 plus years. You know, I found the happiest people, they ain't in here. They stepped out. They stepped out. This afternoon, you have an opportunity to step out. You can go home, watch the box, stay in your box, be comfortable, be safe. Or you could come back and say, hey, I'm going to step out. And you know what happened? I've done training and outreaches all week. We went out scared. My slogan for my team is, I'm scared, you're scared, let's go be scared together. But I noticed, you know, they came back with joy. Because the funny thing is, when you step out, that's when you experience. You don't seek happiness, happiness finds you. You step out of the box and it taps you on the shoulder and goes, hi. <laughs> and you go, oh, wow. <laughs> Step out this afternoon. Out of the box. And Jesus told a story. We know the story well in Matthew 25. The master with the three servants. And I'm going to call the servants, the three servants, Tom, Dick, and Harry. And I'm Harry. Say hello to Harry. Hello, Harry. That was a little weak. And you want to do it with a smile. Say hello to Harry. Hello. hello, Harry. And I'm Harry. Oh, Master, you're, uh, you're going on a long journey, and uh, wow, you're, uh, you're, you're, you're going to give us some, some uh, talent, some money. Oh, wow. You're giving Tom uh, $5,000. Whoa. Wow. You're giving Dick $2,000. And uh, wow, you're giving me. $1,000. Hmm. I wonder why he's given, the, given Tom 5000 and Dick 2 and me just one. I know I'm reading between the lines in the parable. Is that okay? Yes. Thank you. Because you wonder, don't you, sometimes, somebody's got these talents. Just, just got one. 
<laughs> wow, Marcy, you're, you're taking off. Whoa, whoa. If you, you want us to invest for you, you know, for you. And uh, wow, if you could text and give me a heads up when you're on the way back, that would be great. And uh, wow, Tom, you're off as well. Whoa, be careful. You could lose it all. Master won't be happy with you. Wow. Tom, the, I'd invest maybe the thousand and hold back the other thousand, you know, rainy day and all that. And uh, wow, wow, I just got one. <laughs> what am I going to do with them? Wow. <laughs> what am I going to do? I feel good. I'm going to keep my eye on this. Nobody's touching this. <laughs> I mean, Tom, he could blow it all. Couldn't he risk it all? Huh? Think the master would be happy with him when he says, you know, I lost it all? Or well, Dick, I told him the one and one. <laughs> I'm going to keep my, I just got this one thing, I'm going to keep my hands, watch that, nobody's touching it. I feel okay. Master's okay, I'm okay. Everything's okay. Okay? Is this you? Is this you? What are you doing with what God's given you? Talents God has given you. Organization, hospitality, generosity, teaching, training, evangelism. What, what God's given you, each one of us, some one, some two, some five talents. Whatever the number, what are you doing with what God's given you? What are you doing for the kingdom? Are you a good investment? When the master returns, will he get a return on his investment? When the master returns for me? What will he say? What are you doing with what God's given you. And what are you doing with the gospel that God has given you? Are you saying, I'm going to keep my eye on that? <laughs> no one is messing with that. I'm going to protect that. Six years ago, God gave me one wish. You know what happened? It became fresh calling for me. Didn't that totally surprising me? I was just in a regular team devotions at our OM base in Atlanta, Georgia. Gathered every Tuesday morning devotions. That morning we had a guest speaker like you have today. Southern Baptist pastor. And he got up and he shared something and I was standing at the back. Hard for me to sit. Standing at the back. And he said something that totally upset me. In fact, I was so upset, I couldn't wait for him to finish. I went straight to the podium afterwards. Didn't even introduce myself. I'm sorry, I wasn't probably a bit rude. I went straight up to him and I, I said, Pastor, you said something. And I was standing at the back and I figured out I got three options. One, I can live in denial, it's not true. Number two, I can't live with this, it upsets me. Take care of my family, Lord Jesus, take me home to heaven today. Get a personal rapture today. Or number three, help me to do something about it. And do you know what he said? He said, I'm a Southern Baptist pastor. He's just moved into the town to take over a church, over 2,000 members. Got all the whistles and bells, nice church, beautiful building, nice folks, okay folks, nice box. 
And he said, I'm a Southern Baptist pastor. This is him talking. The largest mainline denomination in America. Most evangelical denomination. 16 million of us. We got the most camps, retreats, Bible colleges, choirs, songbooks, hymn books, training court, you name it, we've got it. We got videos, you can do them till kingdom come. But he said, we, re we did a recent survey and we found that the average Southern Baptist, they love Jesus, they believe the Bible is God's word, they believe in the finished work of Christ, people are lost and going to a lost eternity if they don't put their trust in him, all that. He said, we found that the average Southern Baptist, just a recent survey, shares their faith once every 28. What's the next word? You don't say that out loud, do you? You don't say, yes! Hallelujah! Yes. Say it under your breath. Any different for you? And I guess God chose a third option for me. Do something about it. And this little approach, two questions, four pictures. You've had other two questions and four pictures. This is what God gave me. But the average believer living an okay life, okay church, wanting to have a risk-free, worry-free, happy life, keeping their talents in a box, keeping the gospel in a box. So what are you doing for God? What are you doing with what God has given you? What if Jesus came right back now, right now? Are you a good investment? Is he going to get a return on his investment? Cost him everything to invest in you. Hey, don't get mad at me. I'm Harry. Tom, he could lose it all. Master's not going to be happy with him. Dick, he could lose it all. I'm going to keep my eye on this. Look, I'm not going to gain anything, but I'm not going to lose anything. That's good, isn't it? <laughs> hey, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm in an okay church. Master's okay. Everything's okay. It's been a while. Master, I wonder when he's going to come back. I hope he texts or something. <laughs> do, 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 Wow, good to see you. Well, Tom, you're back. <laughs> Dick, you're back. Well, nice family all back together again. <laughs> good time. <man>. Great time. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> wow. Master seems happy with Tom. Woohoo! Doubled it. 10,000. <laughs> Lucky. Could have lost it all. <laughs> wow, VP in the kingdom. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> wow, Master seems happy with Dick. Woo, double that as well. <laughs> I'd have done the one of one. <laughs> wow, VP in the kingdom as well. <laughs> Hello, Master. I'm oh, no, looking good. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> That's, uh, oh, you <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> Here it is, Master. <laughs> you can count it all. The whole 1,000 is in there. I, every day I checked it. Every I kept my eye. No one touched this. <laughs> Here it is, Master. <laughs> Master, you don't seem quite so happy. And uh, you're really happy with Tom and really happy with Dick. And uh, my, uh, it's all there, Master. They could have lost it all. And uh, I wanted to, you only just gave me the 1,000. So uh, it's it's all there, Master. Please, please, please count it. <laughs> now listen to these words. From the message. We like stories with happy endings. When we're children, we ask our father, tell us a story. It's going to have a happy ending. Well, it was happy for two of them, but not for Harry. The master was furious. That's a criminal way to live. It is criminal to live cautiously like that. If you knew I was after the best, why did you do less than the least? The least you could have done was to invest the sum with the bankers where at least I would have gotten something back. The master wants a return on his investment. Is he going to get a return on you? On me? If he comes right now, And then listen to this last bit. Put this in your theological box. Explain it to me afterwards. So take the thousand and give it to the one who risks the most. Here, Tom, you had five, you invested it. Here's a thousand more. Here's another talent. And then he says, take this, play it safe who won't go out on a limb and throw him into outer darkness. <coughs> Harry, you want a box? I'll give you a bigger box. It's called hell. How do you like that for a happy ending? Put that in your theological box. Well, it must be for the unbeliever, this story, right? This story upsets me, makes me nervous. I can't quite sit comfortable. Maybe my okay life is not so okay. And I say, Master, maybe you could just hold off a bit. If you don't come today, that'd be probably good. <laughs> to two of the servants, Tom and Dick, he said, well done. To the third, he said, get lost. What is he going to say to you?
You're in the back row. By the door. That nice box at the back there. Sound box. And there was a day when the father said to the son, Son, it's wonderful here. All this beauty, all this glory, all this space, all this order, all this peace. It's wonderful. Oh, we've had this from eternity past. We'll have this to eternity future. Son, I need you to ask you to step out. I'm going to have them stretch out your hands. I'm ramming six inch nails in them. And in your feet. Is that okay? And God calls us to step out. Sometimes he shakes up our box. Maybe a little shaking today. We like to be stroked in our messages, not smoked. Maybe a little shaking today. Maybe he shakes up our world a little bit. Maybe we get a little sick or lose a job. Well, God calls us, come and do a little workshop. Do a little outreach this afternoon. Interrupts our nice plans. And sometimes God starts to rip up the box. Tough. <laughs> this box we spend all our life on. Huh? What's happening? Must be the devil. No, oh, maybe it's God. Maybe it's God shaking things up a bit. Maybe you'll shake this nation up a bit. Just give me a minute. <laughs> he starts to rip off our box. But for the son to step out of the box, and maybe for you and me, Today, if you want to step out of the box, I want to invite you to come. I want to invite you to come. And write your first name on this box. and say, I want to be a good investment. I want a well done, not a get lost. Would you come? Write your first name on the cross.
Jesus would say to you and me as the Father sent me out of my box so I send you out of your box and one day I will return and I want to give you a well done good and faithful servant God, we thank you for the message you have given to us today. When we received Jesus, we became part of something so much bigger than our, our life used to be. When In the days when our lives were centered around our own desire, <coughs> And we were still lost without God and without hope. And Lord, you came to us. You left the glories of heaven. You humbled yourself. You came to reach out to us. You found us. You paid a price, a ransom, your own blood. And you became our substitute. You died for us. And you have called us to that life, a life of victory, a life of meaning, a life of fruitfulness, a life lived in the light, a life that lives filled with the hope of glory that is to come. And all of these truths that we have learned since we uh, 
receive the word of God in our lives have been producing in our lives you know, this knowledge of God and this knowledge of the truth you know there is a world outside that do not know what we have known and we want to be part of your kingdom we want to be the ambassadors of Christ we want to be the proclaimers of the good news of Jesus Christ we want to be the mouth the hands and the feet that will carry the most beautiful message of salvation. We start here in our Jerusalem, but we are going to the uttermost part of the world. We are walking out of a box, walking out of, a, of self gratification and looking for the salvation of others. This is what you have called us and you have equipped us and given us the power of the Holy Spirit to fulfill that, to enable us to bring salvation. And thank you, Lord God, that you have given us this message to remind us of what's important, Lord, and what you have in mind for us. We thank you, O oh Lord Jesus. You are touching our lives today. You are touching our families. You are touching our future. You are touching our decision-making process. How do we make our decisions for our lives? And Lord, this afternoon we want to be part of what you want to equip us to make us better and to sharing this wonderful good news. We have this treasure hidden and earthen vessel and Lord, we want to proclaim it to the world. And we thank you this morning for the message we've heard and what you are doing in our church and what you are doing in our individual life in our families, in our jobs, in our schools. <clears throat> Lord, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God for the salvation of those who will believe. Thank you, Lord. Receive all glory and honor, Lord, from our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise